Welcome to Tone Talk. Welcome to Tone Talk. What up, what up, y'all? This Tone in the building. Tone Talks is here. You know we're going to have this discussion today. Appreciate everybody giving me their Friday. I know it'd be a busy, busy time for everybody with these holidays, but we got to have this discussion. Y'all seen it on my Facebook. Y'all know what I'm talking tonight. It's going to be some feelings out there that might get hurt. Shout out to Chase, my little cousin that did this beat. I'm looking to have this discussion about marriage pattern matching. <sighs> Black marriage pattern matching, to be specific. So they, they in here. You know I got Zoe Williams in here, relationship expert. Hopefully I can get Yvette Cardell to call in and just fall in and grace us with her presence. But we gonna get it going regardless. We getting it going with that question. Are we marriage pattern matching as a long as a loophole answer to the cost of race in America? I got Zoe Williams to weigh in. Y'all know how we do it. We do it by questions. And so, like, let's just go through the questions, then we'll bounce back out, and me and Zoe have a conversation. Then I'll let y'all call in. We'll do it like that, right? So the first question is, are we seeing black women and men, Jack and Jill, black elite pattern match mates based on their background and make it by saying they are looking for someone from a good family mm. when they really looking for someone that is a, a American DOS wealth outlier, meaning that they are aberration as their personal answer to race. American DOS race outlier. outlier. Descendants of slavery. Come on. You know, you know we got it today. Ugh. If you got any problems with the sound, please, please go to Dash Radio Dash Talk X. Please support this channel. I have a Patreon. Patreon is Tone Talks. Also, go to my go to my YouTube. Go to my YouTube and turn it turn on uh and join the super chat and and donate through the super chat. We in there dialogue and having a conversation. So look. This is the this is the issue we having right now. We looking at this thing and, and we seeing people pattern matching. I, I need somebody from a good family. But when you look at what they good is, it's basically everything black folks don't have. Number two is the relationship pattern matching of everyone from Nigerian immigrants to black elite, all a way to leave the mass of American DOS with the blunt cost of American slavery by avoiding politics that lift the entire race all while using up blackness that affords scholarships, voting rights, and American access. Let's get honest. Let's get honest. You know we gotta have this discussion. This is Politics 102. Number three, what is coming from a good black family in a world where 70% of black children are born out of wedlock and the middle black American family is worth nearly no wealth? Is good defined by not being in the 70%? Meaning your parents gotta come from a good married family? Come on. Number four, are women looking to date a man for the resources of his parent? And when he is a boomer, boomer hooked, are they dealing with the additional consequences of marrying someone with that type of financial parasitic relationship with their parent? Let's, mm. You know, you go out here and you marry this dude from uh, the good part of Maryland or from uh, Ladera or from, you know, San Francisco. And then he just like his... His mama and his daddy who do taxes and cheat black people. Then you like, why he cheat black people? Did you look at that good black family and find out if they good for black people? Let's get it. Number five, is marriage about multi-generation familial assets or individual love for black folk? Why did you really marry your mate? Is it because her dad has two homes and is leaving her one? Is it because his mom will be a boomer grandmother that makes your life easier as a mother in daycare is that really marrying for love <laughs> number six if we are pattern matching what does it mean when we expose the fact that to be in the top five percent of black families you only need three hundred fifty thousand. that's all to be in the top five percent of black families that's all you got to be worth can you pattern match with no idea what a wealth pattern looks like let's get to it Let's have the dialogue. Let's Yikes. start the discussion. So, Dash Radio, Dash Talk X, support the channels. Wonderful shows here. What made me want to have this discussion is a personal reason. Let me get real. But before I get real, let me tell you what pattern matching is. It comes out of the concept we see in uh, 
Silicon Valley with the investment firms, the venture capitalists. So they when they when they pattern match, they look for a Mark Zuckerberg like young white male that dropped out of Harvard that knows a lot about computers. That's who we want to give our money to. Mm. Well, what I think is happening is that black folks are doing that in relationship and not getting honest. Black men, black women. And what it's doing is not getting honest about how wealth is unequally distributed within black America. Let's talk about it. Let's get right into that first question. Are we seeing black women and, and men, Jack and Jill, black elite pattern matching mates based on their background and masking it by saying they're looking for someone from a good family? What you think, Zoe? Wow. It's, it's, it's sad when you have to remember good was a spiritual concept at one point, a person being good versus a person being bad. There was a quality. There was a moral quality. There was uh, something more, something beyond what they had. You know, there was a time when what you had reflected who you are as opposed to the other way around. Now it's, you know, I got this and this defines me before it was, you know, this gold I'm wearing represents something bigger. And I'm talking about in ancient times, we live in materialistic times. So we are judged by what we have accumulated externally. When you talk about good, like, you know, a good family, listen, you can have a wealthy family, but they not be good in terms of morals, in terms of integrity. I mean, look at the Trump family. That's not a good family in terms of what they believe in. So all of that stuff has been thrown out the window, you know, uh, for safety, certainty, security. And this is why, in my opinion, relationships are not only highly transactional, but highly volatile. They break down quicker than they would if they had something more substantive at the base. Shout out in the chat. Young man just shouted it out. He said, my ex-wife complained about me being from the projects and she was from the suburbs. Whoop. Let's talk about it. So I can't do this without giving y'all context. Some of y'all know this information already. Some of y'all are new followers and won't notice. What I'm starting to see is that black folks don't understand the, the extreme wealth discrepancy within black America. Mm-hmm. So within black America, if we were to look at it, it's like the third world. The top 10 percent of, of, of our 20 million families, about two million, have all of our wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, they have 75 percent of the little slice, the little two percent that black America has. Mm -hmm. The next the next 10 percent has almost 15 percent of the wealth. That's 90 percent of the wealth in these two groups, these four million families. Right. The bottom half of the race isn't worth a dollar. Mm. So what you end up with is this reality of a total of a negative 4.4 in worth for the bottom half of the race. I did a piece called The Decadent Veil that even fleshes it out further. I'm going to share a little section with you. Then we'll dig into what you're doing when you pattern match. Because mm. I'm going to tell you the truth. My parents had me, like I tell you all, 16, barely 17. Uh, no wealth. And what I see is that usually from my background, you become a, a prisoner or you... Uh, driving uber so like <laughs> what happens is people meet me and they know i'm a lawyer but then when they find that family they out because they pattern matching let's like, get real with minute, it eh? whether it be i i i, I only want to date nigerians or whether it's like I, I i need somebody who who can whose parents can put down on the house right all of it comes from the fact that you don't know the data see when you know the data you can understand that what they saying is they don't want to deal with the regular pros problems of black folk and black life Mm. This is not a some banal conversation, though. This is a conversation. No, this is this here is a conversation <laughs> of an all. Yeah. To let y'all know that there's a con being played with this black pattern matching. But mm. let me get into it. I did a piece called The Decadent Veil. Y'all read read it and heard of it. It's about black celebrity, but in it, I have a section where I flesh this out. And in this section, I say, Federal Reserve numbers show the median net worth, assets less debts for white households. And the top 1% is about $8.3 million, while median net worth for all white households is about $112,000. Mm. This is the exact midpoint of America's 90 or, or 85 million or so white families, whereas where half, half of their families or 45 million families have more and, other, and the other half possess less. 
That makes for a staggering 74 times less wealth for an average white household when compared to the top 1% of white households. This is among the highest levels of income stratification between classes in the developed world. Yet the wealth difference between the American black household and the top 1% and the average black household is several times worse. As reported by MSNBC, the median net worth of the few black households in the top 1% was $1.2 million. While we look over at the black data, middle black ain't worth $1,700. Mm. That's not 74 times. That's not 74 times. It might even be 1,000 times. That's something you see in the third world. So what am I saying here? Tom, what are you saying? Well, if you're trying to pattern match, what you're trying to do is avoid race itself. But you ain't nobody ever told you that. So I want to have a discussion today of the consequences of that. Is that going on? Why are we doing that? And what is the ultimate consequence of it? You feel me, Zoe? Yeah, man. You ready to have that talk? <laughs> yeah, man. Where's your girl, Yvette? Yvette, I see you in the chat. Call in. Yeah. Look here. Look. We need her. <laughs> a, a black family in the in the one percent is worth a staggering about five hundred times that of an average black family. If Black America were a country, we would be among the most well stratified in the world. Mm. Do we understand what it means if you try to pattern match with that kind of discrepancy? What ends up happening is that black folks end up not dealing with race, but looking for loopholes. But inside of looking for loopholes, you create loopholes based on cheating black people. Come on. I'm going I'm to bring some, some names out. Duvall, Patrick, uh, you know, he supposedly was involved with subprimes. Valerie Jarrett, articles about slumlording. What happens when you marry that family and you find out that that's what they're about? Mm. We looking at this thing and we seeing black men doing this debutante pattern matching thing and we not being honest. Do we got a vet on the line? Hello? I'm here. What up, vet? Hey. What's going on? What's Thank happening? you so much for calling in. So I done set up the show. We out here having a discussion about pattern matching. Can you give us a backdrop on pattern matching and whether that's going on with black folks today? Well, you know, when we started talking about pattern matching, we started talking about it in the context of Zuckerberg, right? And so once Zuckerberg became, this, and Facebook became this huge phenomenon, what happened is that all these people who were giving out, all these venture capitalists and, and all of that, all these investors, they decided that they were looking for the next Zuckerberg, which meant the next Ivy League dropout guy in a hoodie who was, you know, coming up with something phenomenal in terms of social media programming or whatever. And so, you know, you had all these people saying, like, well, I can be him. And it's like, no, they're looking for a specific pattern. They're not looking for you. They're looking for the next Zuckerberg, and that's not you. And so w when you talk about that in terms, of, in terms of marriage and in terms of relationships, people are looking for the somebody who fits like this kind of criteria or, you know, I want a house or I, I want somebody who has a down payment. I want somebody who, who wants to uh, uh, be a mogul like me or, you know, who has a family with two parents and I can, I can, I can get some money for a down payment on a house for them. Or I have a, a grandmother who's a built-in babysitter. And so that's kind of a criterion. Even if the criteria isn't something that you talk about, it's consciously you have a subconscious like standard that doesn't match the background of American DOS experience and lineage. Come on. This is Dash mm. Radio, Dash Talk X. We bring in the fire today. Mm. This is part of a two-part. You know, we just got through doing Zoe's show about chocolate-covered, you know, our, our black women mimicking white women and, and just relationship in that way. But this is, this is the second part where we talk about are we pattern matching as a loophole answer to the cost of race in America? Yvette, it, if, if that's the case, and we, what does it mean if 70% of, of black babies are out of wedlock, the middle black families were 1700 without depreciating assets. We have income stratification where the, the top percentile of black people have hoarded all the little wealth that black people have. Pattern matching, does it, does it end up suffocating the race? Well, 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 before it suffocates the race, it suffocates the relationship, right? Mm. And that's why, and that's why <laughs> the relationship isn't working. That's why that relationship isn't working because you are blaming – you're blaming your spouse for something that America did to you, right? And so, and so because you, you expect it, like, instead of us saying, hey, politics, this is what America has done to us, and America needs to give us an answer. Like, what happens is you turn to that spouse and I say, I need you to get an answer. And so you set your partner up to fail, and that suffocates any relationship. What do you think, Zoe? I mean, <laughs> Yvette is so brilliant, man. 
I, I really love her. I don't her need you touching. I don't need you hitting me vet <laughs> like that. Nah, man. I got to deal with her every day. And her she's gonna be brilliant. Bro. I, I believe so, too. Because what she touched on was the ability to relate suffers. Do you, see, we listen, it's like having technological advancement with no spiritual maturity. Right? Technological advancement without a spiritual compass leads to death. Mm. We're going to create bombs. Come on. We're going to create anything within our power to protect an imaginary border. But if we don't have a spiritual compass, a spiritual development, which is the foundation of relationships, then we don't know how to connect to each other. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to see things in context. We look at our emotions, our feelings, and our interactions with people in black and white. Do you see what I'm no, saying? I feel you, Zoe. So all of these uh, relational setbacks, we kitchen sink. You bring up one topic, we throw in every other unresolved issue. We gaslight in order to manipulate and control our partner. So the basic ability... To actually relate on an intimate level gets pushed back for the advancement of whatever society says is the goal you should have right now. In the final version of this, I'm going to bring back up a chart. And in this chart, what I'm going to show you is black people by percentile. What we know from the Federal Reserve data, data shout out to my man, Matt Brunig, who did this chart from the micro data from the Federal Reserve, is that. The top 30% of black folks have 98% of all the black wealth. Mm. That ain't saying that they good people, though. No. Now, if we pattern matching and we're talking about good families, everybody trying to date and marry people in that top 30%. Mm -hmm. So are we discarding the other 70%? Now, I will say, ain't it interesting that that matches the out of wedlock number, right? Sure. So, sure. Yvette. If the top 30 percent, like is we almost like a third world country within black America. Now, I'm not even dealing. I brought it up earlier with uh, Patrick and uh, uh, Deval Patrick. I think that's his name with uh, subprimes and Valerie Jarrett with the accusation of slumlording. And we're going to get into that a little more. We're going to dig into that. If when you find out that your your, your boomer step parents ain't good people, that's how they get, became black wealthy boomers. But before we get there <laughs> and then you want to complain. Then you want to complain. But <laughs> before we get there, what I'm dealing with is if the top 30, if it's almost like a third world country within black America and the top 30% has 98% of the little slither of wealth we have, what does pattern matching end up doing for relationships, particularly male, male like female selection process? Well, I think, I think, it, I think, it, I think probably what happens is that it just, you know, it, it makes you pick out like the worst of people. Mm -hmm. So like, so like, the, so like the person who is who is pushing subprime mortgages on 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 your grandmama is like the person that you 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 choose like you want to be with because they have all the ornaments that are used to signal what you want or what you think a partner is supposed to provide in this America. Mm. Come on, I want, mm. I want to say something else that goes to what Zoe talks about a lot. I don't know. In a in an era where where we're that's where we're this vicious and aggressive in terms of like what has to happen given what's happened to us, how you ever would have any kind of vulnerability in mm. that kind of in a, in a in a relationship with that level of financial expectation where the other person who has such little chance of delivering. I, I, I've had that problem. <laughs> I like to get specific. I've had that problem. Eesh. Everybody everybody wants you to have no debt. Like your parents gave you a car. They want you to have a down payment for a house in L.A. They want you to have the wealth that comes from basically being an aberration. And so I come to you and I ask you, e e Zoe. Mm -hmm. Zoe, Yvette said something specific. She said you need to have the ornaments. You from Dina? What's the ornaments that come with being a, a pattern matching <laughs> top 10 percent black person? That wasn't us in Dina, but we but had not you. Dina. That wasn't you, but <laughs> yeah, like but you it's, got it's like what that. are the ornaments? Listen, you you know what it is. You got to have that education. You got to have some money. You got to have a home. Let's I mean, uh, let's be specific though. Some money. Is it 90,000, 110,000? I think it, I think it's roughly 100,000. 
And, and you got to have some bread. Understand when you say $100,000, we're talking top 15% wealth in all the race. True indeed. And that hurts because, again, Yvette is speaking on something that's very, very powerful. When you talk about pattern matching, black people are pattern matching not just with each other to, you know, to build relationships or build family or legacy. We're also pattern matching a very, in my opinion, mercenary society. This society is mercenary at its heart. But the one thing they know different than us is they don't blame the mercenary for being a mercenary. What we try to do is say, why can't you be like the slave and consciously right. be kind and moral? We right. got a caller. Let's take the first caller of the night. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling That's from? Big. It's Sarah from Sacramento. Sarah, you calling in for I even gave Sarah, the number out. You got to get in. Sarah, let me, I'm going to read this next question to you. You, you know you got... Three of the best on 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 the line right now. You got Zoe, you got me, you got Yvette. We got to keep Yvette for this one a little further. We do. Number two is the relationship pattern matching of everyone from Nigerian immigrants to black elite all the way to leave the mass of American DOS with the blunt cost of slavery by avoiding politics that lift the entire black American DOS race. So we got about 20 million families, 40 million people. There's only 2 million immigrants, but they got a lot of professional jobs and they intramarian. But they say it's because I'm marrying a a Haitian or a Nigerian. Mm. Interesting way of putting, I'm not marrying a DOS. Now, what we know and what I know from specifically being told, there's specific elements of don't marry a DOS. Don't marry a descendant of slavery. Mm -hmm. But also baked into that is you don't want to marry somebody that don't have no down payment on that house. Forget the fact that it becomes because they came from slavery. But you can still take the scholarship, though, that come from Jackie Robinson. Right. Now, we also see that with the Boule black elites. We done worked too hard to create this little wealth. However, we took it, stole it, gained it for you to go off and marry somebody from the projects. Mm. What you think, Sarah? I mean, I think people, when they say, you know, I'm looking for a Nigerian guy or whatever. I mean, I think they that is code. Um. And I think that we aren't shown how, I think we're shown what white people do on TV as far as, but we're shown black depictions of it. And Hmm. I'm thinking right now about blackish where you have, you know, the Tracy Silverstein character who does come from money married to her name um, was like butterfly or something weird stuff right Uh, rainbow it was rainbow i'm sorry understand understand that that house that they lived in was impossible it was a i think i i had another show with shannon dungey you can look at that one it was like a two million dollar house that neighborhood demographically is not almost 95 percent white and probably a five percent is renters that are black so like it was it's just fantastical but that's that wish fulfillment tv not to cut you off finish your point i'm sorry yeah, it's wish fulfillment TV, but her husband is supposed to be someone who didn't come from the same level of class as she did. And so I think we see those images and we think that that's something that is attainable or that could happen to us. Like he, I guess, in a way, because of his corporate success and his marriage to this woman who comes with her own wealth, has escaped blackness. And I think that's really what the show is about. We ain't going to deal um, with the fact that his job probably makes him about 85000 which is not a $2 million house. Without what? White inheritance. Mm. Yvette, let me come to you. Mm. Same thing. Is the relationship pattern matching of everyone from Nigerian immigrants to black elite all the way to leave the mass of DOS with the cost of DOS, descendants of slavery? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a way to leave us with the cost of the cost of slavery and also a tribute, a tribute to us, a tribute to us that cause. You know, the empty of that cause. Well, the reason that I'm not marrying you is because you don't have the money and you don't have the ambition and, and other people here are successful. And, and so it, this is your fault. And so I'm going to leave you here with this, not because I'm a bad person, but because this is your fault. And the thing that happens is propaganda, which you just said, that wish fulfillment TV, like it pushes it on us. It pushes it on us. But you did the thing on the whole cause, how much all this stuff is just fake. And so, but it's, it's pushed down our throat. And so you almost feel like if you don't adopt that as your mindset, as your way of life, 
you're just a loser and you're just not being aggressive enough and you're just not a go getter and you're just settling because you don't you know you don't you don't have you don't have high self esteem or whatever the case may be. These people out here pattern matching. I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. Somebody that went to UCLA, went to Loyola Law, they out here, they ain't got time for you to talk about like they call it an excuse when you tell them that you got teenage parents. They call, they tell you stuff like, uh, uh, I like somebody with no debt. When you start talking about that debt that it takes to make yourself come from the ghetto to go to UCLA, they ain't trying to hear that. They, right. they, their parents raised them right. Right. Gave them a car when they was little. They got their first car at 12. Right. So, so, so Carla, any last thing you want to say to this? Um, I think there is. I really feel as though... Um, Marriage in certain contexts, in certain white contexts, is transactional. It is an alliance forming between two families. They are sharing their wealth. And I think we who are DOS don't understand that. And I think we seek to attain marriages and alliances in a way that's completely ill-informed and has nothing to do with where we're coming from financially and what our legacy is. And I think we are not we're told to have a white life, but we have never been given the opportunity to be American or be whole. And so how can we be whole and have marriage that are mm. whole and Let's go. Let's mm. go. I'm coming to, th thank you so much for calling. I'm coming mm. to, I'm coming to Yvette and then I'm coming to Zoe after I read this question. But before I do that, you know, I'm going to open up the phone lines. 323-230-4610. Call in. I want to hear your opinion on this topic. Are we pattern matching as black folks? as a loophole answer to race in America. I believe we are. My personal experience, absolutely that's happening. Now, Yvette, the caller made a great point that that's what's going on. You made the point. But what happens when that's going on on the Jackie Robinson scholarship? So they're using up the blackness that affords scholarships and voting rights and then loopholing with it and saying, I'm just going to create like a niche of just Nigerians or Boulay blacks. And that's who's going to benefit. When the scholarship is named after Thurgood Marshall or Jackie Robinson because it's supposed to uplift the DOS race, what happens, Yvette? Well, what, what happens is what happens is that, that, that we and our specific justice claim get lost in that. Because, see, the thing is, instead of saying, no, 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 you, 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 you are not representative. Yes, you're black. Nobody's saying that. You are not representative, though, of the, of the, of the middle family 1700s black person in this country and that's who that was designed for you are getting a disproportionate piece of the pie and what i would say too in terms of in terms of how they pattern match and what they do and kind of the result of that pattern matching before you even get to that point like when you talk about like one of the things that i've watched online a lot is this gender sniping and one of the things that happens and one of the ways you have it when we talk about what i just talked about vulnerability you don't, you, we're at a place now that, like, I don't know if anybody loves the other person anymore or is even trying <laughs> to love the other person. Like, yeah, they just, they're just out here loving the expectation um, that has been attached to that person mm. and, and the ambition that they have. So that person is really a reflection of your own desires and ambition as a reflection of, of what you can do as a human being in this life in terms of loving another human being mm. and having meaning to your life. We don't even talk about meaning in relationship anymore. You know, let me say something to y'all. <laughs> I said this on one show maybe a year ago, and a year later, it's the same thing. I'm between two of my favorite people in the world, <laughs> Yvette Carnell and Zoe Williams. Like, you know how people say, I wish I was rich? <laughs> if I was rich, this is all I want out of life is to listen to Yvette and Zoe and then myself. And I'm just saying to you that the jewels that she just dropped – Wow. I can't do nothing with those. So same question to you. What happens when don't nobody use the Thurgood Marshall scholarship That's crazy. to help black folks, but they just going to get a tax business and take advantage of, of, of black women by giving them loans against their taxes that are definitely coming at 20%. So it, again, come on. It's like, if you don't know about what you just explained, cause I don't really know about it. I don't really know about politics. I leave that uh, politics and taxes and economics I listen to Yvette Carnell and Tone Talks to get that information, to get the contextual information of that. I don't really know it. But what I do know is if the average so-called upwardly mobile, educated black person, male or female, doesn't know 
they're probably considered a late bloomer or or someone who's ha- who's suffering from arrested development. But let me say this. There's also a relational arrested development. You so busy chasing after the benchmarks that society has established for you to have the the ornaments, as you call them. Right. We so busy chasing after that, that there is a relational arrested development that Yvette Mm. spoke of earlier with regards to vulnerability. Come on. If you haven't been taught how to be vulnerable at an early age, you think you're going to be able to do it after you get your degree, after you start your business? I've been through that. <laughs> Let's take this caller, though. <laughs> Lines are lit. I opened them up. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Al from Washington. What up, Al? Let, let me ask you, what what is coming from a good black family in a world where 70% of black children are born out of wedlock? And the middle black sure American family. <laughs> but yeah, it, coming from a good black family means you hit the lottery. Means you was lucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it really does. Uh, and, and in my experience, my father tried to pattern match me with my wife. Right? Um, he said to me, like, um, she she's DOS. Don't come from nothing. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm at the same time, I'm DOS. Don't come from nothing. And, like, I told my father I was going to marry her. He's been in prison for, like, 13 years. I said, yeah, I'm about to marry this woman. He looked at me and said, do you want to be broke for the rest of your life? And I'm like, I looked at him in his face and said, yeah, I've been broke for all of it. So we could build something from there. She ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. Man. So, so, so what does this mean? Right. What are you trying to say? Let me say this. I commend you, and I, I see you got a young one. I really hope that everything's going well for you as you guys proceed through this whole term, uh, t- uh, tumultuous yeah. 2018. But I, I, <laughs> my blessings are with you. I got a, a lit up line. Let me take the next caller. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? So, so essentially, the question is, what is coming from a good black family in a world where 70% of black children are born out of wedlock? Well, what's on Zoe, Yvette, really, in my opinion, what is the definition of a good black, good black family? Is it blackish? Is it what we see on Empire? Or is it what we used to see with, uh, good, with times. good Times? Yeah, I, I mean, well, I, I think that if it ain't Good Times, then it ain't that many good black families. Because mm. that's the data. I'm not saying that everybody's living in the projects anymore because we have credit cards. We have ways to get wealth into our families that good times didn't have. We don't got to just live on our income. But fundamentally, from Louisville to Atlanta to St. Louis, see, one of the things that me and Yvette get to do, and Yvette can, can, can speak to this, is we get to travel around the country and see Philadelphia and St. Louis and, and see these communities. And if you ain't really, if you don't like good times, you don't like black folk today. And that's, can, can it be what it is? And I think for a lot of black folks, we look at Susan Rice, but we don't look at Susan Rice's son. Mm. Yvette, you remember Susan Rice's mm. son? Mm. Yeah. The clear yeah. dude that loved Trump? I might put a picture of him up when I, when I bring this up. <laughs> and, and caller, you know, uh, I appreciate you calling in. Any last thing you want to say? Lines are lit. I want to give everybody a chance to get in here. I, I just want to say uh, thank you to, to you, Yvette, and Zoe. I listen to y'all. I'm here in Atlanta with Yvette and uh, y'all have really changed the way I think about life, politics, and relationships. So, hey, kudos to all three of you. That's what we're trying to do. Lines are lit on this topic. Are we black pattern matching? I got Vet up in here. I got Zoe. Please go to my Patreon Tone Talks support. Also, we're in the chat. We got almost 500 people in there, and they fighting and scratching and debating and loving and I hugging. I love it, man. Doing it all. So <laughs> so uh, let's take the next caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Tom. Hey, what's up? Let me ask you this next question, and then I'm going to come to Vet. I can't do it without Vet. Can't, man. Are women looking to date a man for the resources of his parents? And when he is a boomer hook, and when he's boomer hook, are they dealing with the additional consequence? Actually, I'm going to come to you, Zoe, on this one. Are they dealing with the additional consequence of marrying someone with that type of financial parasitic relationship with their parents? So their parents is in tax business. And you all know that the black tax business is a loan business. (laughs) Y'all set them up January to February to March, 
and y'all get a chunk of money and loan it to poor black people at predatory rates. But then your father got you in that business too. <laughs> and so now you married that guy. And now you want to know why he treating you so slimy in your marriage. And I'm asking you, are, are, are black women dating for this pattern matching? And then are they dating without the honesty about who they're pattern matching with? Give me your opinion. I mean, absolutely. And it's, and it's uh, like you say, a uh, boomer hooked. You know, I, I come from a background like that. You mentioned a lot. My grand, I'm hooked to my grandmother because I was raised with her in Ladera Heights. Mm. But yet and still, that don't have nothing to do with me. I don't have that money. That generation is gone. And so there, there is the expectation of, oh, you, this is where you come from. Yeah, but that's not me. And like you said, it's an aberration. I still slip back down the cracks in the poverty. Mm. So ab absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think? So you see Donald Trump's people going to jail, right? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. It's, they they on track. Somebody going to jail. You can't get Dash Radio in trouble. Yet. Hey, let's just go there, man. Somebody's going to jail. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Somebody going to jail. Here's the thing. At the highest level, there's corruption. Business is all around opportunism, capitalism, and it doesn't require morality. So now, the lower level motherfuckers, we're going to have some morality in our relationships when the higher-ups don't have it? Come on. Come on. Wealth calcification will breed that. What you think, Vet? Are, are, like, are they ready for the consequence? Well, no, but what, what Joe said about morality in relationships, I've always talked about morality within the tribe of American DOS, but let me just say something else. And when you talk about morality, what you're really talking about is a set of standards and a set of values, mm -hmm. right? And if, and if you don't have those set of values in common, then what do you have in common? And I will say this. You talked about black women in terms of choosing. That is absolutely true, and we're going to talk about that. But I'm going to talk, talk about everybody has a barometer that's really messed up. Yes. And so when you talk about mm -hmm. black men, what they're looking at is, oh, she's fine. What does that mean in terms of women? <laughs> now, you got to be attracted to whoever you with. If you, you cannot be in a relationship where you're not attracted to the person. Right. But, like, overvaluation of certain of certain qualities and then the undervaluation of other qualities it feels like in in in, in so many of these relationships everything is upside down so mm -hmm. the women you're pattern matching and you're trying to find something that 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 isn't even that doesn't even exist according to the data and if it exists it probably exists because they inherited it or because they did some dirty stuff and then men you just like well she's fine like what th these are not stand these are not meaningful standards for trying to find a lifetime mate Caller, thank you so much for calling in. Wow. You know, we're going to keep this show going. What's interesting is, and I'm going I'm to take another call in a second, is people out here ghosting from that. So, like, once you find out that uh, he ain't got them patterns that you thought should exist, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even answering the phone. I'm just going to do it disrespectfully. Mm. Uh, I'm going to do disrespectful, dirty stuff to people um, to make them feel bad about themselves. I'm not going to deal with race, but race is coming. Because what we be finding is that these people that's supposed to have some wealth, vet, you with me. You you with me. You find out that the house got liens on it. You know, this house that, that you married based on, <laughs> it's owned by everybody in Tennessee. All the cousins on this one house. <laughs> but we can't focus on that. We can't put you got to move forward. You just got to move, move forward. Now you want to get divorced because, because he, he wasn't the pattern that black folks don't have. I mm. gave you all the data. Top 10%, 83 million white homes, 10% worth north of a million. A full million white homes worth more than $10 million. Black mm. homes, black homes, 20 million, 20 million, 350,000 worth more than a million dollars in, in, in hard assets. Pension, mm. house, mm. everything. Most of them at 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. Out here looking for an aberration that is not just an aberration, it's a strike of lightning. But you take the ornament if it look glossy, gleamy, and looks like lightning. And they be mad that it's not lightning. This is what's going on. We out here pattern matching. And this is the importance of knowing the data. It's about knowing your environment. It's about knowing what is truth and what is real, what is race. It's about having a purpose and a rooting to yourself. Let's take the next caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Love to hear your opinion on this topic. Um, yes, hi. This is Dawn from Atlanta, 
And um, so I'm a parent of kids that are going to be moving into the marriageable age. And when you talk about pattern matching, just to play devil's advocate, Although I understand, I'm, a, I'm American descendant of slaves, so I understand that the majority of us don't have money, but should we look at trying to make sure that our kids have the best possible possibility of making it out or being stable in their life? I don't even, I'm not even looking at being rich, just being stable. What is stable? So for me, being stable is actually having money, like, you know, maybe a year's worth of bills in the bank. That's black uh, rich. Comfortably afford- I'm sorry. That's black rich. Like, like that, the importance of the data is it tells you what the, what you're saying and where it places. Let me give you an example. So nine months of savings, if you got a house and kids, is about four thousand times nine. So you're talking about somebody with forty to fifty thousand dollars liquid in their account. I just told you that the top five percent of black families are worth three fifty hard. Didn't I just say that? You just said that. So. What you're, what, and those are all boomers. So fundamentally, what's happened right now is we, we because we don't know the data and aren't dealing with it, are basically saying we want a very, very rare aberration and, plain, and planting it as though it's middle class expectation. I'm just saying this is the numbers. I'm saying that I'm not saying that it should be the numbers. I'm saying this is the reality. So what ends up happening is we send children out into the world that are extremely vulnerable to people who can provide that kind of wealth, no matter how they got it. Mm. Well, here's the thing, and I mean, as someone who's been married, gotten divorced, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. You get jerks that are poor, you get jerks that are middle class, you get jerks that are rich, and so, and that's on the female and male side. So, what I'm talking about is not necessarily expecting, like you said, that they're gonna come to you with no debt and have, you know, down payments on homes, etc. But there is an expectation that you're not going to drag each other deeper into debt. Does that make sense? No, but I'm saying it doesn't make sense when you know the numbers. I'm not here to argue. I don't want to argue on the show. What I'm saying to you is that when I tell you that, and I had this issue with Zoe's show with incarceration, that the bottom half half of the race isn't worth a dollar. When I tell you that the top 30% of black America has 98% of our wealth, and you tell me that your kids want to be with somebody with nine months of savings, Together, I'm saying that you're saying that you want to basically run from the other rest of the black America. That's the numbers. Can we, if it's going to be that, can we say it's that? Yes, but let me so let me give you an example. I don't necessarily have the money just to, like, say, set my kids up and give them everything so they'll be that kid or that person that walks out in the world with everything paid off, et cetera. But one of the things I did say is in order for me to at least try to stabilize you somewhat to go into life is that, you're going to have to make sacrifices. And part of that is, you know, as long as they're out of state, you can stay at my house and I'm not going to charge it. I'm already paying my bills, but you've got to bank all that money. Like 80% has to be in the bank and you can't touch it. And you can stay here for two, three, four, five years in order, in order to stabilize yourself. So is it going to be hard? Are there sacrifices? Yes. But I would want them to find somebody of the same mindset that understands our status as the Senate of slaves and you can't go out and buy a fancy car. You know what I mean? Like, I just I think that the pattern matching. It's not necessarily you've got to be yeah. wealthy, but a mindset of understanding our position mm-hmm. I'm, and then making sure. Go ahead. And I'm going to answer this off offline. But let me say this: you can. Thank you so much for calling in. One of the issues that I'm running into is again, I did a report with Sandy Darity and Dark Hamilton, leading an intergenerational economist in the nation from Ohio State and Duke. It's on the Duke website. I did an article on Fortune magazine on the ten myths to close the racial wealth gap. We can't be saying bootstrapperism. And not be honest, that's what we're saying. We can't say respectability politics and not be honest, that's what we're saying. Our numbers have to be real honest about where they place in terms of black position. When me and Yvette use the number 1,700 as the middle family, that's not about whether it should be that way. It's about understanding the consequences of that. What we're trying to do as a race is say, I understand that number. I care about black folks, but I just want to be around the top 15% or so of black folks. And um. I want them all to be moral, kind, and care about other black folks. And that's just not the case. Yvette, what's your take on it? Well, no, I kind of I kind of have a different take. I kind of, I, I, and, and, and if, if I'm wrong, she can correct me on the next show because she's a frequent caller. But what I, what I think she's kind of saying, too, is like, what if you raise a kid? And because of how you position yourself, like, you were able to give that kid, you know, your kid has $15,000 in the bank, right? Because of what you were able to do, 
because of how you were either positioned or let's say you, you, you were able to, to be a unicorn and get a $100,000 job. And then you, you're in a position now trying to protect the stability of your kids by not putting them or positioning them with someone who doesn't understand that we're American DOS necessarily and wants to go spend or wants to go and, 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 and do all a bunch of other things that are going to drag them down and become an albatross around their neck because of their unwillingness to understand our positionality and, and how to move within that and be reasonably, we never going to, 15,000 even going to get you stable, but to be more stable than other people. And I totally respect that position. I, I just feel like what, what I found and what I even heard in, in, in my interpretation is a statement about buying cars, is a statement about res like personal choice rather than really dealing with the fact that you being able to give them $15,000 is extremely rare in this race because of in the middle of wealth calcification. <laughs> and I just think that what, what we got to do is get honest that everybody not vet, everybody not Yvette. Everybody not in a in a, in a position where, because like, because everybody I nobody fifteen thousand. No, no, no. I don't. No, I don't mean she it. She allowed her kid to save fifteen thousand. She allowed her kid to. She put her kid in a position to 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 like save up. Like she didn't give it as a gift or whatever, but she put her kid in a position to save it. And then they get with somebody who's just going to wreck what she built up in that kid. And we come back saying. to we come back to the problem during wealth calcification. If you're going to be that, then you got to say that. Because, like, that means in the middle of this moment, when we know the numbers, that you are saying that the black people that don't have that money can't come around. And that's a challenge everybody's going to have to deal with. It might not show up in terms of buying jewelry. It might not show up in terms of buying cars. It might show up because they got to give their mama some money. For the, They got to give their auntie some money. And all of us got to deal with that. But the question that comes back to, can you pattern match your way out of that? What do you think, Zoe? This is why in our society today, you have concepts and ideas like love isn't enough, right? Because of scenarios like the one you guys just outlined. It's so business. It's so mercenary. It's so transactional that first off, sacrifice is a spiritual quality. Hell, you call yourself a Christian. You say you believe in Jesus. It's predicated on sacrifice, right? For God so loved the world. If, you, if you're a Christian, you believe that stuff. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's a sacrifice. Can you sacrifice your son for other people? Come on. Would you? We live in a transactional society, man, period. We can't even get to the point of compromise. You know why? Because ourselves are at the forefront of every decision. So we'll 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 fake compromise. We'll we'll compromise on, on the diet side of the game. It'll be diet compromise. That's my point. We yeah. won't compromise anything that threatens the outcome we're in pursuit of. And we'll get rid of people, we'll get rid of relationships, we'll get rid of anything. If that gets in the way of us getting the outcome we want, we're not in relationship with people. It said I, I wrote it in the uh, the relationship dismount. You're dating an idea, a concept. You're not really dating a real person. So you're what trying to fit that person into the template of this idea. So what does that mean in an era where we're seeing more wealth calcification, more unequal? Like when Piketty explained it, he said that America is the most unequal place possibly ever. Right now, I, I know it sounds extreme, but this is one of the great economists of our moment. He Piketty, capital in 21st century, America is in the most unequal place, the country that has like right now. What does all of this mean if we're going to try to create stability in that kind of moment individually, not as a group against government? So I come to you, Yvette, and I, then I Wait. come to Zo, come to yeah. Zoe with these two questions, with this okay. question. Yvette. If we are pattern matching, what does it mean when we expose the fact that to be in the top 5% of black families, you only need $350,000? Can you pattern match with no idea what a wealth pattern looks like? Mm. I, I, don't, I don't think you can. But that's why, and that's why I believe a political foundation is so important. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, I think what, the, I think what the previous caller was actually speaking to was a level of recklessness in a partner. And then mm. your kid have something and not being reckless and how do you deal with how do you deal with that in terms of how to see your child 
what I say is that, listen, once you get this idea of tribe in your head, once you get a political foundation amongst the group, then what you have is like you have a shared vision and you have a shared outcome that you're fighting for, which is not a shared outcome that has anything to do with pattern matching. It has to do with political outcomes. So you have to shift the ambition in the group. So then I don't care if you got 10 or 15, you can put them together with somebody in the group, middle family 1700, who has nothing or who is negative, and those people Come on. fit because they have a shared outcome and they're, and, they're, and they're focused on that. That's what they're focused on. They're not focused on, but we're going we gonna to be moguls. And I, see, I got 15. You can't go to Dubai? Or you got, I got 15 because I came in with some money. You came in here with a crackhead mama. You know, you're not focused on that no more. You focus on, listen, 15 ain't even nothing. We, we can't go to Egypt. Seven, we can't go to yeah, Egypt. No, we're going no, we to be, we be responsible with this little bit of money because I was just watching watch on TV and Obamacare is gone, struck down or whatever. We live in a precarious world. The only thing that little bit of money that you got does is put you in a position where you may be able to make a few rent payments until, until the next thing comes. But, mm. if, if you, but if people have a shared ideology that is based on something, that is based on something that is bigger than, this, than, than getting creature comfort, critter comfort, bigger than a car, bigger than clothes, Bigger than just you wanting everybody to see. You can't even see that car on the outside. If it's bigger than all that, then you can really push us towards something political. And that's what the real money is, baby. All this stuff y'all talking about is little bitty money. Come on. This stuff is little money. I'm talking trillions. You talking, you talking red bottoms. I mm. can't help you. And a man talking bitly. I can't help y'all. Y'all don't even understand <laughs> what y'all are talking about in terms of wealth is small. Let me say this, Yvette. You shared mm. that your parents are older. You know, my parents, 16, yours are older. You know, late yeah, 70s. So I think one of the things that automatically is built into how you perceive things is a much smaller world. Your parents, parents probably were out of the depression. What I feel is, ends up happening, at least in my experience, is you'll get somebody that talks about not being reckless, but then always talks about traveling. So you don't want to buy yep. cars, but you want to go to Egypt. Uh, but all that is spending what we don't have. Right. Come on. So Zoe, answer the same question. If we are pattern matching, what does it mean if we don't have no wealth? As a group, what that does, it turns the place where you're supposed to gain the greatest amount of information about who you are as a person. I always say relationship is a mirror, right? Relationship is a highly reflective mirror where the feedback you get from your partner is your personal curriculum. What it does is. It obfuscates that mirror. It clouds that mirror. You don't get the lessons. And then relationship turns into a practice of survival. Man, look here. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for both of you guys. Both of you guys coming on this show. Because, this, it, it, you know, this is a conversation that needed to be had. Um, Zoe, let Lou actually start. Vet, tell, tell them where they can find you. Mondays and Wednesdays, nine thirty PM Eastern Standard Time. That's where that's that's where that's where I'll be. Uh, YouTube Live. And also, Zo, tell them where they can find you. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, The Voice of Reason, five to seven PM on Dash Talk X. This is Tone Talks Dash Radio Dash Talk X. Let me say this: If you want to support these kind of discussions, please go to my Patreon and and, and join Tone Talks Patreon. Patreon dot com forward slash Tone Talks, or you can use. My my super chat. Everybody's in the, in there talking. And the last thing is you can go to tonetalks.org to support by subscription with PayPal. We're gonna keep bringing these discussions. I'll see y'all soon. Happy holidays. Thank you again. Thank you for tuning in to Tone Talks.